Yo, powerful nonsenses. Hello. We're back for another episode. Welcome back. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> yeah. Or, or actually joining us for the first time, if this is indeed your first time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. If this is your first time, I'm Wayne Ingram. I'm Jamie Aldis. And we are the Powerful Nonsense crew. Posse. <laughs> the Powerful Nonsense Posse. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know why that tickled me so much. Uh, right. So today... We are talking about ways that you can organise your mind. Because people have very cluttered minds. Yeah, and you know what? Actually, I have definitely come to learn that my mind is incredibly cluttered. A lot of rubbish incredibly in there. Incredibly cluttered. It's like, I need it. give it a defrag. Defrag it, clear the dustbin, clear the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid- no, no, let's not go down there. Anyway, so we want to give you some practical ways that we think really help to organise your head. And just generally, I think this is the stuff which I think is the crucial stuff in terms of productivity. And you're a big fan of this I am productivity. Bit, I'm, I'm a bit of a productivity geek. And I'm like on the other side of it where I think a lot of it is a load of fluff, so it's going to be yeah. a very interesting uh-huh. discussion. Nice bit of devil's advocate playing from you for once. I don't know, we'll see. It's normally <laughs> me being the arsehole. Being like, <laughs> I'm the, uh, I don't agree. I'm the designated arsehole today. <laughs> designated arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Amazing. You can decide at the end of the episode who, who was the who's, arsehole. Who's who? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, yeah. So, um, we're just going to kind of talk through those things. I think these are some of the key things that make me quite productive. Although sometimes, I must admit, I feel like the organisation side sometimes goes a little too far with me. And I think people get a little intimidated by how organised I am. Not in a kind of like, shit, he's so organised, <laughs> but more in a like... Fucking, it can wait, <laughs> kind of thing. So what sort of problems, I mean, to kick this off, what sort of problems do you think people are having? Or if it's a listener who's out there, maybe mm-hmm. wanting to start a business, mm-hmm. what, what was your sort of impetus for the episode? What sort of problems do you think they may be suffering with? Which is why they need to obviously so, get their mind in order. I, or what's, what was you suffering with, which is why you felt the need to be so Yeah, okay, yeah, that's or, a, I think that's a good place to start. So uh, when I finished my training I set up a company uh, a production company and I also was trying to get a career off the ground as an actor yep um, and I think that was where the problems began to appear was because it stopped being about running just the one business of me being an actor which I think I had been doing p- perfectly well with at that point for where I was in my career and then about juggling that and juggling Because it's very easy to get yourself organised, I think, when you've got one thing to focus on. Really easy to organise. But I then had a day job, I then had my acting career, and I had this production company that I was all juggling. Now I also have this that I have to juggle as well, which makes it even more difficult. Um, And God knows we've come up against some challenges with that, (laughs) right? Um, So it all then became about knowing when to spin certain plates, how long to spin those plates for... um, and that sort of thing. And I think as we're shifting into this age where most people have got a side hustle, or even people about... that don't think they have a side hustle often have a side hustle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like my sister, for example, she's a midwife, but she's also got um, an embroidery type business thing that she does on the side. Whether or not she considers that a, a business or a hobby, I don't know. But to me, it looks like a potential business. Um and so those are some of the challenges that I think people are facing now, whether it's producing content online and things like that. Most people are doing something on the side. And I think if you want to grow in one area, I think you've got to get organised and be able to get focused on that area. And that's kind of... Yeah, I think a lot of our listeners are probably either they might have a full time job and they maybe think, OK, I want to work on something on the side. But I also think a lot of that organisation is also don't just strictly think about your business stuff as well. Mm. I think organisation also is how you manage your life. Well, exactly. And this this then became another issue that I started to realise um, about six months after coming out of uni. It was like, wait, I don't have a life. <laughs> Where's my life gone? <laughs> I and, have a job now. <laughs> and then, and that was, I think that was ultimately what led to my burnout, mm-hmm. was I didn't manage it properly. And, and now I'm very adamant that I make sure I get recharge time every week, even if that is just half a day. Um, which is not enough, but if that's all I can fit in, then that, I'll fit it in. And, and often my... In fact, no, we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Cool. 
So um, I think actually the logical step to kind of talk about first, given what we've just talked about, is that you shouldn't really multitask. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, uh, science, st- scientific studies and research suggests that A, multitasking isn't a thing, in that your brain can only focus on one function at any one time, much in the same way that a computer can only focus on one thing at the, at a time, despite the fact that it can give the illusion that it can be focusing on more than one thing. Um, I definitely cannot multitask. If I'm texting somebody, if you're talking to me, that's it. Mm. <laughs> you may as well not bother. I think the thing is that the blind spot initially before the idea of multitasking is the idea that I think a lot of people don't really understand what they're actually doing or how many things they're actually doing in their life. And mm-hmm. I, I generally think that a good place to start before you think about am I, am I not multitasking is to think about everything you do do in life and what you enjoy doing. But I think with with this in particular, I'm talking about task at task level. So this isn't about overarching. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Kind of. So this, is, so this isn't about... As an example, this, is, I, this isn't about me having a production company and being an actor. That's not what I'm talking about. This is this is me more talking about uh, being on my emails whilst trying to edit a video. Fair enough. So, because actually research suggests that if you are interrupted during a task, then it actually takes you about 15 to 20 minutes to get back into the level of yeah. focus that you were in before. Okay. Um, and so I think that means, oops, sorry guys. Uh, that means that, um, you're then, you're, you're, you're slowing yourself right down. And actually, apparently your IQ when you are trying to multitask is affected more than if you were drugged up on weed. So you'd be smoking that split. So you're actually better off smoking weed (laughs) <laughs> then you are multitasking are we, are we advocating drugs in terms of IQ. <laughs> it's not to advocate drugs, but in terms of, you know, cognitive effect, mm-hmm. you'd better off, at least in the short term, <laughs> smoking weed than you are multitasking. Yeah, I think it's just, when you think about multitasking, it just seems dumb to kind of initially think that you can do two things mm-hmm. at once. It's just mm-hmm. impossible. I don't even know why people even say multitasking because it doesn't exist. Yeah. Your brain, like oh you say, God, if your brain can't figure out that you're doing... Like, you just can't focus on two things at once. It makes totally no sense. Like, even if you tried to, you cannot split your, where your thoughts are. So it, I, I don't actually think multitasking exists. And if people say they multitask, no, you just switch from one to the other. So for me, multitasking is not even a thing. I think you either give something attention two minutes of that or five minutes of that. And I think the only the only way to look at it is to think that actually when you have that focused attention, focused attention means you don't let anything interrupt. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's when you create something productive. When you say, okay, for the next hour, I'm writing an article, mm-hmm. everything out, every distraction is off, mm-hmm. you'll get it done. I mean, to keep saying, okay, five minutes in the article, five minutes on the emails, five minutes, like you basically take four hours to make the article and get your emails done. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's why one of the reasons I actually love, if you have a Mac, Apple plug, uh, if you have a Mac, definitely use full screen mode. Because I find full screen mode just gives you that 100% focus. You've only got one window open to focus on that task. That's one thing I'd say. And also, um, using the Pomodoro technique is wonderful for productivity. So the Pomodoro technique is uh, you essentially give yourself 25 minutes. You focus on one task in that 25 minutes. That's it. You turn Mm -hmm. off all notifications, everything. Just focus on one task for 25 minutes. Um, And then after that 25 minutes, take a five-minute break. And if you've still got more to do on that task, go for another 25 minutes. So you're just going through these 25-minute sprints until a task is complete. Mm-hmm. Um, and you will find your productivity will go through the roof, I think, when you use the Pomodoro technique. That alone, I think, is worth the price of admission. See, I love productivity hacks like that, but I also just think, like at the end of the day, if you're writing an article and you generally believe it's something that's useful then I just think there's a massive like disconnect between the idea that you're doing it and it feels like you need to hack yourself to kind of figure out how to mm-hmm. do it or how to focus. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the time, if you generally believe that you're doing something that needs to be done or it's mm-hmm. it's a job or it's work or it's a freelance gig or it's an article you need to mm-hmm. write, I sometimes question why people need to have all these hacks just to write. If you need to have full screen because you don't feel like you can focus on writing that article, maybe you don't even need to be writing the article because you're obviously not, in, in, you're not infused enough to focus on it. I don't know what your take on that would be, but that would be my idea around it. Um, 
I know where you're coming from. I do know where you're coming from. But um, that's assuming that everything that you do in your work life is something that you get excited about. And that's just not true. Unless, you're, unless you have the money to be able to uh, uh, delegate. The, the stuff that I do as an actor that I hate doing. I hate doing it. Mm-hmm. I can't stand it. And like most of that stuff is the stuff where I'm not acting. And so <laughs> then the productivity hacks then are a way to focus the mind so that you're not focusing on how much you dislike doing it because mm-hmm. that's irrelevant because you have to do it. Yeah. So I do understand where you're coming from. But I mean, with things like blog posts and, and things like and creating content, yes, of course. You know, if if you're finding that you really have to fo- have that time to focus... Um, and really do these productivity hacks in order to produce that content, then, of course, question why you're doing it, if that is the bulk of, of what your your thing is, right? Mm-hmm. But then let's say, for example, instead of writing a blog post, you've got a book to write in 30 days, right? A 500-page book you want to get finished in 30 days. Then you have to start thinking, okay, I'm going to have to hack my way into this because likelihood is... In 30 days, you are not going to be able to write a 500-page book by not applying these things because you are going to have those days where you're going, I'm just not feeling it. And quite often, I find that the not feeling it comes from a lack of focus and a lack of, well, a lack of focus. Yeah, I just think there needs to be that, the joint effort. I think you can, there's lots of technical hacks, but I do think there's a lot of like intrinsic sort of behavioural. If, oh, you, if yeah. you have both on point... I think that's where you're going to thrive because, like mm-hmm. you say, you write that 500-page book by the end of the month. I think if you've got an in, a really good, positive, intrinsic motivation, you'll get it written. It's like when people oh, yeah. end up writing it in three days or something because oh, yeah. they're so empowered to do it. But like having the systems definitely help. I just think I just want to make sure that when people are listening that they're not thinking just because I maybe oh, yeah, pull like, a few technical hacks yeah. that maybe I'm going to start writing that book. I think no. it goes if back it's not to... There, if it's not there, it's not there. Yeah. But these are about optimising that. And I think some of the stuff that we'll come on to, I think, is going to kind of cover some of the some of the actual problems. Because I can think of where we'll come into that. We come into that. We come into that. As you're saying cool. that. So, uh, so to move on, uh, Inkafad, let's let's challenge. I'm going to change my order based on what you've just said. Cool. Right. Meditation. Yes. Meditation. I think fundamental behavioral change comes from meditation if you do it consistently. Yeah, and I think meditation is just that silence to pause, and mm-hmm. maybe that meditation in that in that silence and that quiet, then you kind of listen to yourself and re- and think about the reasons why you're doing mm-hmm. that article, why you're finishing your accounting. Maybe like that, like you were saying, with all those tasks that you hate doing, meditation gives you that little bit of quiet and thinking space to realize actually the things I hate are probably the things that are going to get me to where I need to go. So it's kind of I think that meditation is so important because it gives you the the space really to think mm-hmm. about the bigger picture, and not to kind of just get caught up in this whole flurry of got to do everything. It's too overwhelming. Mm-hmm. It kind of really slows things down, and gives you a better perspective. Yeah, I find meditation. I find it most effective when I'm feeling overwhelmed, when I feel like, oh, you know, I've got so much shit I need to do today that I really don't want to do. Uh... <laughs> Those days are the days where I'm like, right, have a good meditation session, mm-hmm. just 10 minutes. I use the Headspace app, by the way, yeah. uh, which is free to get their sort of take 10 free course, which you can then sign up to to get more. But yeah, um, and I find that that meditation really then brings me straight into this grounded, uh, productive mode where it's just like, well, look, my mind, I think my mind goes into focus mode then and it's like, well, let's just get this out of the way as quick as I can. And often things that I think are going to take me up till four o'clock in the afternoon are done by lunch, mm-hmm. quite often, because you're in that focused state. Yeah, I just think as well, like um, a lot of people might think, OK, like you say there, and I'm probably a bit guilty of this sometimes, is the idea that you wait till you feel out of control before you start mm-hmm. meditating. Mm-hmm. And I think it's not one of those things. It's not that you just dip in and out whenever you feel like you've gone. So I think... Um, as Zig Ziglar said, it is like people only listen to my tapes when they become depressed or down. Uh-huh. It's yeah. like, well, actually, why wait for that? If you just meditate mm-hmm. more regularly, suddenly you're going to feel a lot more in control. And I think mm-hmm. that's a good way of looking at it as well. I don't wait for shit to hit the fan before you decide to like wind down or 
take some time out or decide to meditate. Mm -hmm. I think it's a consistent thing, and I think we know what it does to the brain. It helps you see wider. It helps you to have a gap in between your thinking. I think it does. That that kind of stuff stuff does really, really help. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, just a side note, one of the things I've noticed about meditation, I've been trying to get really consistent with it lately. One thing that I have really noticed is... I feel so much more relaxed about everything. Mm. Well, not everything. There are some things that still really piss me off. <laughs> but like, I'm, I'm, my temper is not as short as it was. So, that's another thing. Uh, okay. So I feel like I feel like I tackled one of your issues <laughs> issues with meditation a little bit. <laughs> um, and to go along that theme, because I feel like I have to back up, <laughs> back up my productivity stuff here. Um, another one and another key one, I think, and you're definitely going to agree with this. You're not going to disagree with this one. Is your sleep? Sleep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just think again, no human being. And I know. I feel like I'm being like really like <laughs> blunt and harsh in this episode. <laughs> but for me, these stuff are so like. Well, you are. You are the. You know. I am the advocate uh, of this one, so I just have to be the <laughs> asshole. But I generally think like for somebody that wants to have any kind of like structured, not even structured, like productive life in any kind of way, if you are not kind of caring about sleep like it's a second fall like oh i'll get it in whenever i can i just think like there's not going to be any sort of success in any aspects of your life because it's such a fundamental part of being a human being and i don't care whether it comes down to <laughs> being actually being able to run your business or to write an article i'm just like saying you need sleep to be a good human being and that means being actually patient with people who you meet it means being a good friend it means being aware that you haven't texted your friend in ages mm -hmm. or it means being aware that you're you're not waking up starving or you're what not messing up your hormones because you've got a lack of sleep or you're feeling tired the whole time so you're angry and agitated i'm just like it's such a fundamental thing to me that it shocks me that we still have to kind of tell people to actually like prioritize your sleep it's like you're more fussed about brushing your teeth but you're not fussed about actually going <laughs> to sleep it blows my mind sometimes <laughs> yeah and i think we've we've kind of developed into a culture where it's like you brag about how little sleep you get which is just bizarre. I just can't get my head around it. Um, I mean, I must admit, I could do more to make sure that I get a good night's sleep. I'm awful with my sleep. I've got some really bad habits, like having stuff on in bed, on the TV, is one thing, really bad habit. But if you can, if you can really get to grips with making sure that you maximise your sleep, I can definitely tell when I have. I get up earlier, naturally. I wake up feeling more refreshed. And then my day, naturally, be just because of those two elements alone, becomes far more productive. So it's definitely worth looking at ways that you can improve your sleep. We actually did an episode way back when mm -hmm. with Adam Stansbury called Go the Fuck to Sleep, um, based off the book, um, about ways that you can improve your sleep. Um, so check that one out. Um, and also there's a TED talk about why sleep is so important, which we should probably link to. Yeah, I just think if you're not looking after your sleep, you are ultimately self-sabotaging self yourself in the same way that if you decided just to drink alcohol the whole time, you're just mm -hmm. going to destroy your brain, you're going to be unproductive, you're going to be unmotivated. And yeah, there are the amoebas who... Amoebas? <laughs> the, amoebas, uh, anomalies. The anomaly, <laughs> that's the one. Amoeba, what's an amoeba again? <laughs> amoeba is a single cell org organism okay. with no brain. <laughs> Yeah, you're that as well. <laughs> no, it's an anomaly. Like, it's such, like, there's some people who can actually get away with not having much sleep. And I just think that, yeah, you, that's throwing me off. <laughs> Sorry, don't be an amoeba. Basically. Yeah, don't be an amoeba. But no, I do think you have to just think, like, there are people that can get away with it, but we, we don't know what the sacrifices are later on in life. And I just think, like, come on, sleep is like a fundamental thing. It wouldn't have been put into this machine if it wasn't necessary. Well, exactly. <laughs> Particularly considering we spend about a third of our life doing it. So, mm -hmm. Or at least we're supposed to. So, we need to thank our sponsor, the University of Northampton. These guys have been great to us and great to you because them sponsoring us means we can continue doing this, right? Yep. Right? So, uh, the University of Northampton uh, specialise in social enterprise. So they're all about degrees, obviously, because that's what unions do. But they're also very, very interested in getting their graduates to set up businesses, particularly in the social enterprise space, which is all about business doing social good. So if you're thinking, yeah, I want a degree, but I also want to set up my own business, then I highly recommend, we highly recommend, as alumni, that you check them out. 
So head over to northampton.ac.uk. All the information is there. And we'd like to thank them very much for their support of the show. So we're back. And I've taken a deep breath. <sighs> so Wayne, where are we going next? Well allocated, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I want to talk about some more practical... I mean, sleep and meditation are practical. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. But more just kind of like base level stuff. Um, so one of the key things which I've had to experiment with for quite a while to make sure that I get this right. So this one does take a little bit of work, despite how simple it seems. But keep a written list of what you need to do. Um, I think I'm actually going to be nice to you on this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is one that I have really battled with to get my to-do list system down. Um and I feel like I finally cracked it recently. There are just so many articles on this topic online. It's there unbelievable. Are. I think like productivity, I reckon if you put a search in, it'd probably have so many, especially on the to-do, on to-do list. Lists, yeah. Everyone's got their own system. I mean, we've even got an article on our um, uh, blog that has yeah. a, a different ways of setting out that system. So I know uh-huh. you've probably done I've the most done, research on this ever. On this because I've always had these, because I use my phone as my kind of to-do list thing and and I schedule in when I have to be reminded to do things. So I've got mm-hmm. my day scheduled through my to-do list. Um, but one thing that's a real challenge is actually when that list gets far too big mm-hmm. and it's about siphoning down that list. So my advice would be, yes, keep your written to-do list. I would personally use technology because it means you can do more with it, but some people just like pen and paper. I think the Find first point there is just do a to-do list yes. first. If you're not already doing yes. one, do one. Yes, do one. <laughs> Um, really do because it really makes sure that you don't if you've got your system right for whatever works for you it means that you know you're not going to forget to do certain important things yeah um but yes make sure as well though that the first things that you do in your working day are the things that are really going to move the needle forward Uh, because it's so easy to get bogged down with the tiny little things that Mm -hmm. really don't matter and just make sure that you're prioritizing your list um, I mean, I kind of went into a lot of detail about the way I do it on the blog post, which is uh, declaring to-do list bankruptcy, which mm-hmm. went out a couple of weeks ago at this point. It was probably about a couple of months ago by the time the episode goes out. Um, but yeah, search for that, and it kind of breaks down at least the basic level of, of my philosophy on my to-do list. Um, because I find that I'm least productive when my to-do list gets overwhelming. And then that's the point where I kind of go, when I look at my to-do list of the day, I'm like, meditation session. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah. In, yeah, fundamentally, keep a to-do list. It's going to be very hard for me to say how to do it because I think it's a very personal thing mm-hmm. um, for what works for you. So, yeah, just do a to-do list. And my points on the to-do list is ultimately that to-do list has to be done the night or the day before yes like it is pointless yes. like you will never if you wake up in the morning then write your to-do list and hope that you're going to somehow go through that it's it's just pointless it won't happen you'll wake up and it'll be unstructured oh now i've got to write a to-do list and then your day becomes the whole idea of oh today i have to write my to-do list and it just doesn't get done one yeah. of the most beneficial things i do every single night before i go to bed is just write down what has to get done tomorrow and i think i don't know what your take is on this way and it's this idea of like what actually makes it to the to-do list. A lot of the time we might just add things and they're, like you said, it might be just a little fluffy, quick things to do. Mm-hmm. And then I think sometimes though, if you can just make that first thing on your list the main thing, like this has to get done tomorrow. And I think for a lot of people who are probably starting out, whether it is creating your side business or maybe writing a book, just have it maybe that singular thing that you wrote it down the night before and you know the next day, okay, I'm going to write a thousand, 500 words or a thousand words of my new book. Or I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna do one hour of training on the piano, mm-hmm. or just kind of have those sort of little minimal goals. I think the problem is that people are usually stuck in this mentality that it's overwhelming the journey. Like where they want to go yeah. is they want to be the musician, they want to yeah. be the author, they want to be the actor. And I think it's so important that you kind of have the daily to dos because it all, it all adds up. Is that kind of whole idea about the compound? Um, what's it called? The compound well, effect compound effects every single day just taking a little task one at a time suddenly these tasks become quite natural that 500 words feels really easy and suddenly you up it to Mm 2000 and stuff like that and i think it is the idea that especially when you're starting out you really have to have that low barrier barrier to entry task to do big time because that way you do them consistently it's like people go on a diet they say well i'm going to only eat this for the next whatever and it's kind of like it's too much pressure that next day just say i'm going to have one bowl of uh, spinach more than the rest of it and it's kind of 
as you do that, you slowly build up that momentum and it becomes part of your habit, it becomes part of what you do. And then it's a lot easier to then start doing bigger tasks. But I think maybe a lot of listeners who maybe listen to this, it's at that point that they don't, currently don't have any idea, no list yeah. of what happens tomorrow. There's yeah. no plan. And I think to bring it all the way back is just to get that list done the day before. And it might just be that singular main task that moves you a little bit closer to doing that thing that you want to be doing. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, yeah, make a to-do list and experiment with how your system's going to work because it's very personal. Linked to to-do list. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much, because you seemed all right on to-do list. I don't know how much you're going to push against me on this one. <laughs> and this is one of my key things that I've, I'm always on it with. Calendar. Make sure you're using your diary. If you are at the point where you are overwhelmed with how much stuff that you n- need to do and it's not sticking in up here, definitely use a diary. I think everybody should use their diary personally. Because uh, I think so many people forget and they're like, oh, I double booked myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just use your diary in however, whatever way, shape or form you want to use it. One of the fundamental things, though, that I think that I had to learn the hard way was making sure that in my diary as well is not just work stuff, but social leisure stuff as well. And marking out the time in my calendar is like, nope, no work. Because particularly when you're trying to get a business off the ground or any sort of side hustle or anything, it can be so easy to get sucked into work after work after work. And then a month goes by and you've not had a day off, really a proper day off because you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm just going to do a little bit of, you know, I'm just going to tweak the website for about an hour today. And then an hour turns into two hours to three hours to five hours. And then the day's gone. So I think really importantly, schedule in that you time. Mm-hmm. I think that's the most important use of the diary for me right now is scheduling in when not when you're not working. See, I'm not. I don't really use um, calendars as much as I probably should. But in the same breath, that I do think this one is one of those ones that's a personal preference. I think mm-hmm. you can also be quite aware of when you're spending too much. But I know I have done it one time where I had a day where I was like, I know I've got a lot to do, and I did put in the calendar. And I did find that because I did that. I got a lot more done. Mm -hmm. But then I think you just need to also be aware that you don't want to be so regimented that you can't tweak and change as well. I I don't use a calendar too much, Mm -hmm. but I do when it comes to like business and meeting clients and having a meeting and having Uh a filming session and stuff like that. But again, for me, my sort of to-dos of the days will be prioritised on what my notes say. And so I do them in that usual order and I know that my work Uh day might be between this time and this time. Well, this is where I've recently shifted the way I use my calendar. I used to be so regimented on the calendar, so unbelievably regimented. I would know exactly what I was doing when, sometimes to task level. And that was the point where I thought, no, it's too much because I've already got the tasks Mm. written out in the to-do list. And now I just know when I'm working, which is kind of like, Basically, the only thing now that goes in my calendar, which has changed, is the unnegotiables, where I have to be somewhere at a certain time for a certain That's time. probably how I use my one for it, is yeah. those unnegotiables. Whereas it used to be, well, I'm working on this today, and that would be blocked out. Mm. Um, whereas I don't do that anymore. I have shifted with that, which does give me a little bit more flexibility. But, but I am still very rigid on my to-dos. My to-dos have to be done by the end of the day. Mm-hmm. It's, it's almost a way of gamifying it of just going okay all those boxes have to be ticked by the end of the day once i've done that then i can relax mm-hmm. um so yeah use the calendar but i would say i would say use it sparingly at the same time put in your non-negotiables in the calendar also book in your you time make your you time a non-negotiable mm-hmm. um because there will be people that are going to ask for your time at certain days when you're actually planning to take some time out and I think again one thing I've learned the hard way is time out is so important so important so schedule it in and just yeah I mean you don't have to explain to somebody oh no I'm not gonna I'm not available then because I'm off playing tennis or I'm going to the cinema like you don't have to say that just explain that you've already got plans that's all they need to know Mm -hmm. that's all they need to know cool I don't really have anything much else to say about calendars but yeah cool okay (laughs) so uh oh this is an important one where are we going disconnect disconnect yeah this is like the digital detox yeah i think this also probably uh, merges in with the whole me time thing as I agree. well That's and i think what just went through my head as yeah. well but i think as for me i kind of have um 
parts of my life, whether it's with my girlfriend or with my friends, there's things or playing sports or health, these become my me time things and they also mm-hmm. obviously cover different aspects of your being, such as relationships, such as your well being. And I think for me they are my my um sort of time out to disconnect yeah. ultimately. And I think it's just being really aware that you need those times. Everybody to be a, a healthy, well rounded human, you do mm-hmm. need to be able to take that time out to disconnect. It is and I mean even uh, me and my girlfriend have got to the point where now it's kinda like if we're together, it's like, oh, should we have a phone break? Can we go and sit on our phone five minutes, check our updates, right. and get back to being together? So it's kind of got to that sort of level where right. you, you need to kind of say, okay, no phones tonight, but then we have little bits where we check in. And I think that's quite, it's weird, but it's how you kind of integrate mm-hmm. technology into life. We know that our phones are stuck to our hands now. Yeah. So it's kind of yeah. really being, yeah, self-aware and aware to kind of know when to stick them to one side. It's even mm-hmm. when we go for our coffee meetings, I think both of us do like a really rigid where we won't we'll try not to take our phones out as much yeah. as possible because it's usually when we get to have a good yeah. personal conversation really yeah. yeah true one of the things actually i would really love to see apple do i don't know if android do it i'm assuming not is this i i be a killer feature for me would be like notification focus so they've got do not disturb right which basically turns off all your notifications right and they've got airplane mode but i'd mm. really like where if you could do like preset switches so you could have like uh, work notifications so all of your apps that are linked to your work like Trello for us for example oh, well, come alive come alive yeah, and yeah. then you can turn them off yeah. and then you can also have like um, leisure preset yeah. where you can go through like Twitter Facebook yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. so you can turn them on and off separate so if you want to be focused you turn off your leisure notifications That's so you right. don't get any Facebook or Twitter and then you could get uh, when you are when you're finished for the day you can turn off all your work notifications because I sometimes when I'm like okay I really don't want to be bugged by anyone so I have to go through yeah, yeah. and like turn off all the individual that's a really good app idea actually isn't it if you can make an app where you can put stuff onto okay I'm, I'm meant to be working this time everything switches off you know like that um internet app where it says it will switch off your internet for like an uh-huh. hour and there's literally no way around it you have yeah, to other wait than shutting down your computer yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it would be on that basis, but then I don't know where people get, oh, no, can I switch off for that long? What if I miss an update? What uh-huh. if I miss an email? But I think mean, that's quite a cool idea. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I was thinking about it the other day. I thought that would be killer for me. Killer. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, just get have your, even if they're just mini digital detoxes where you're just, like, not being pinged at every five minutes is so important. And it really, because I sometimes go through stress mode where I'm having, like, dozens of people pinging me. I'm like, oh, my so God, popular. Stop. It's not even popularity, though. It's not even because people want to <laughs> wine and dine me. It's because her- people just herb- want... herbal enhancements. It's because people want me to do <laughs> shit for them. <laughs> I haven't even done my shit yet. Let me yeah. dealing with the health shit. This anyway. is why you need all the hacks, right? You're right, yeah. God. <laughs> anyway. Um... Oh, actually, we've kind of covered the last point a little bit with that. So, so just to reiterate, because we're running out of time anyway, is taking breaks taking mm-hmm. regular breaks, um, even if they're just two minutes. I think, again, it's one of the... Like, I always make sure, always make sure I have a lunch break. <laughs> it's probably wise to eat. <laughs> yeah, but so many people are like, oh, I haven't eaten today because I've been working so hard. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? I allocate myself for between half past 12 and half past one every day unless I can't. That's my lunch hour. Yeah. And that's my time where I can just cook something and I can just sit and watch some telly for like half an hour. And then as soon as half one comes, that's it. Game over, back to work. Mm. And I think it's so important because my afternoons become so much more productive because I'm not going, oh, I really wish I could just sit and watch some Netflix for a bit. I've done it. I've had that little fix. Mm-hmm. I've recharged. My brain's kind of back into re- relaxed mode, focus mode. And then I can hit the to-do list again. And I think it's so important to do it. And I think not enough people are. Yeah, I think when we look at every single point here, I think old me, that whole idea about just organising your mind, is just switching yourself from reactive mode. Yeah. It's literally stop just going with the flow. It's just being aware of how your day pans out, how Mm -hmm. you would like it to pan out, and just planning it accordingly. And I think when you look at it like that, get your sleep. This is obvious. Mm-hmm. Like, take some time out to relax. Like, you're going to be more efficient after you've had a break because your brain's now feeling fresh and maybe new ideas come in. Yeah. Meditate. Well, we don't need to show you enough more research to explain why it's so beneficial. And I think, yeah, all those points there are just really, when you look at them fundamentally... They're, they're really obvious in yeah. many ways, aren't they? They are, ultimately. They're really obvious, but 
I think so many people neglect them mm -hmm. that they then find themselves in a little bit of chaos, unable to manage their workload and, and things. Oh, here's another one, actually. I'm going to throw another one in that's not on this list. This is like bonus. bonus. Um, That'd be good. Emails, right? They're a big problem for a lot of people. One of the things I do now is I check my emails in the morning, just in case it needs to affect my to-do list. Most of the time it won't. Mm. A lot of people say, don't check your emails first thing in the morning. I'll leave that up to you. But I check my emails. I give myself half an hour in the morning to go through emails. Then I turn my emails off. Then I check them at the end of the day, just in case anything's come through. And then I don't look at them again. The only exception is, and you can do this easy on your phone. Sometimes there's going to be the conversation where you know that you're waiting for something and it's important. You can set that notification to ping to you and come up on your phone screen or whatever if it comes through. So turn your emails off and turn any notifications for any specific conversations that you know you're going to need something quickly. Turn those on. And don't worry about your emails for the rest of the day. Because I think so many people get bogged down in like, somebody sends them an email. Can you get this done? And it's like, oh shit, I need to do it straight away. And I think that's going to completely derail you for your day mm -hmm. if you're trying to be productive and you've got these three things that you're like, I need to get these done by the end of the day. Uh, I hate to say it and I'm sorry if they're watching, but my boss at work all the time. I'm sorry bold statement I'm not going to say who it is but all the time I'll come in she'll be like I had so much stuff to do today I haven't got through any of it and I'm like that's because you're attached to the phone and your emails shocking and then when she should have left at 6 in the evening she's leaving at 8 in the evening and then her me time's gone no prioritisation no no control no and I see it all the time with people <laughs> and that's why I wanted to do this episode because I think people are underestimating how chaotic their lives are. I think people just need to simplify, like, why are you doing this much shit really? in the first place? Why have you subscribed to so many email newsletters? I thought you were <laughs> going to say, why have you subscribed to so many podcasts? Why are, you like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> why are you listening to this? No, I just, uh, honestly, though, I think, yeah, like you say, it is very obvious stuff there, mm -hmm. but I think it's the stuff that people get so like wound up into their life that it just keeps going over the head and they, it becomes part of the norm that you just blurs it becomes a blind spot and it's just the way i do things it's kind of people need to take that exactly. little moment to step back and actually reassess and one other point as well which is is for you jim thanks is know when you're trying to hack beyond your needs your product productivity hacking beyond your needs oh yeah the productivity so procrastination easy to get sucked into building these productivity systems and you spend hours doing it tidying up your shit <laughs> and then you get to three o'clock in the afternoon and you've actually not done any of the work you spent all of your day trying to make sure that you're more efficient at doing the work that you haven't done you basically forced productivity but it makes mm -hmm. you feel like you've done a lot of hard work mm -hmm. but ultimately you've just learned a lot about productivity and you've done f all <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah, so on that note, uh, now's the time to end the episode <laughs> so that you're not wasting your time just listening on how to be productive and not being productive. So uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, please let us know if Jem was a successful allocated arsehole. I'm trying to smile a lot more so people still think I'm friendly. <laughs> Salty first half of the episode from Jem. As you can see, I'm a massive fan of productivity hacks. <laughs> I, think, I think I've swayed you a little bit. There are elements. Good, good, good. It all begins here, <laughs> so thanks very much for tuning in please give us a thumbs up on youtube and hit subscribe and if you're on uh, itunes also hit that subscribe button please leave us a review five stars or more would be greatly appreciated so we'll let you get on to do your work now get back to work get back to work stop listening to this and go back to work <laughs> but make sure you tune in for next week oh yeah see you later catch you later <laughs>